Hello, Maverick fans. Welcome to another edition of the Mav Puck Cast. Thank you again for tuning in. I am Jason. And I am John. And as we're sitting here recording this, it's seven days until Christmas. Woohoo! And yeah. we got an early Christmas present. <laughs> yes, we did. <laughs> we weren't sure. We thought maybe that was going to be a, a piece of coal in our stockings. But, uh, but uh, after the first period... <laughs> Santa Claus came through. It reminded it reminds me of like one of those what was was the the Santa Claus movies, you know, the Disney movies. Yeah, I with, love those uh, movies. With, with T- Tim Allen. Tim Allen, right? yep. It reminded me of that. I'm like, first part of the movie, the world's ending, it's all gonna be gone, and then it's like, woo, we win. Yeah, yeah. Tim Allen's freaking out, he's unhappy, and then at the end of the movie, yeah, things it's are well, cool. he's settled in, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's successful. Yep. And man, these uh these Western Michigan Omaha games high scoring affairs. God, they are always entertaining matchups, I'll tell you what. And this year this this year there have been a lot of score goals scored in uh in this series for sure, as you just pointed out. Yeah. 23 so, goals scored in two games against Western Michigan in the NCHC pod. 22 goals. And that's uncommon for, I mean, a in it's two games, right? Like the, the average score over time is four to two. So six goals in a game is on average. And I mean, basically... Twice, not basically, twice, Nebraska's put up the average for a game just on their own. It reminds me, being a being a, a college football fan most of my life, it reminds me back in the late 80s when you had the Western Athletic Conference, and it was all those teams out there in the, the Rocky Mountains and in the southwest United States, and the games would be like, you know, 60 to 56. I mean, that's what these kind of hockey games remind me of, and I, I always think they're... They're entertaining. They're a lot of fun, but you do get nervous because you're like, anybody can score at any time in this game. <laughs> no lead is safe. And yeah. And the first game, I mean, was just a runaway from Omaha. So and you're, it you're was little, nice that this game was a little bit closer. Yeah. And you're, you're, you're always a little bit worried when you put up that many goals on a team, how they're going to respond. <laughs> And uh, certainly when you're playing those normal two game series, you're worried how they're going to come out the next night. We had to wait quite a while to uh, to see how they responded. And they look, Western Michigan came out and they responded very well. Yeah, I wondered if it would be easier or harder in this format than normal, because usually if you had put up, you know, if you'd done what Omaha had done and won 10 to 2 on a Friday night, you know, you're turning around on Saturday night. And you know that they're going to come back at you hard. You know that they're going to fight. You know they're going to be, you know, upset or something. But, I mean, gosh, we've played, what, six games in between? And Yeah. So it's like, how much did you forget about the bludgeoning that you just took? Uh, you know, how much is, is Omaha going to forget that, you know, they had just lost their goaltender and they were still trying to figure out, like, what is their team stance, you know, without their number one net minder? And I, I, unfortunately, UNO came out in the first period and res- responded the way that I would have expected. Um, you know, Western Michigan wasn't having it. They were, they were jumping on everything. And Omaha just looked like, we know we can beat these guys. So we're going to try to do stupid stuff with the puck and try these crazy passes. And they kept doing these drop passes to space and it was just bad all around in that first period it was it was ugly all around for sure and western michigan certainly took advantage of it three goals three unanswered goals that first period yeah and uh and the the scoring was spread out but uh you had michael joyo chad hillebrand brett van oss it was thankfully it was not Local name Ethan Frank, who Jason, for some reason on the last podcast, predicted that he was going to get a 
a hat trick. And I'm like, well, thank you, Santa Jason. I don't know what's, I don't know what this is. Jason, Jason's apparently in the, in the spirit of, of giving this, uh, this year, but, but maybe Jason's prediction cursed him because he did not come away with a hat trick in this series and he did not have a goal in the first period, but we were, I, I don't know. How were you feeling at that point? I was, I was a bit worried. I thought UNO could come back. But we haven't seen a lot of that the last few seasons, so I wasn't sure. And when you're down three, that's a that's a tough that's a tough hill to overcome. Granted, it was early, but it's always a tough hill to overcome in college hockey. You're just hoping you can get the next goal, so then it's a two goal lead, and that becomes a little bit more manageable. I guess I wasn't. I guess I wasn't that concerned about it. I mean, I, I certainly was frustrated because I expected more out of the guys, but. I wasn't worried because we had two periods of hockey to play. You've got Western Michigan that defensively just isn't set up to right now with the injuries that they've had to protect a three goal lead like that. You know, if we were up, if we were down three to North Dakota or Duluth or Denver, um, even maybe even St. Cloud, I'm like, they've got the talent to just be able to shut it down. Right. And play the traditional, you know, pinch and jab hockey. Um, and so, yeah, I wasn't I wasn't too, too concerned. But I I mean, I did say the first five minutes of the second period is going to make or break. Like if we don't get one in the first five minutes of the second period, I just don't see how we're n- we're going to try to do too much. And there's just no way I see us, you know, coming back from it. And luckily, Taylor Ward comes through for us. Uh, what, like a minute or so into the second period and makes it a two-goal game. Yeah, with an assist from Chase Primo. And and we've been talking about Taylor Ward a lot on this podcast, one of our dependable offensive threats who uh, hasn't has a little has had a little trouble getting getting going this has had a little trouble getting going this season. But uh these last two games he's starting to come into his own and certainly that was a big, big goal for UNO for Ward to get on the board excited it was a yeah it was a it was a great goal for him a great time to to unleash unleash the fury he uh his play changed a lot when coach jumbled up the lines and moved him on the line with Weiss and uh I think that that I think he's always playing good, just like he needed, he needed some support and that's the support that he needed. And, you know, that's probably been our best line, you know, fairly consistently throughout. They just, they always seem to make things happen. You know, there's always plays that get you frustrated, especially it's always going to be that case with Weiss because he's always going to just try to do things that, you know, push the envelope. Um, crazy passes try to dangle through guys and and that and you know six out of ten times it's not going to work but the four out of ten times that it does it's a pretty awesome play so it's a it's a thing of beauty for sure yeah yeah i'm like, like an, the, i think it's in the third that uh we got in in uh in the slot area and the puck was just in their feet and he started just like dangling it back and through. I'm like, this is like what I do to my kids, right? Like when they were really, really young and could barely skate and barely stick handle. And you just like, you put the puck through their legs and you pull it back through and you're basically just spinning them around like a top. And Weiss is doing that to another college player. (laughs) I'm just like, it's it's nuts. Can you, can you imagine if he just had just like a bit more size on him, a bit more bulk, a bit more size? I mean, it would be a, a thing of beauty. He is a he is a he's a bit smallish as a player, so that he runs into trouble sometimes with some of the bigger, uh, bigger defensemen, bigger forwards that he's facing in this conference. But uh, but that line, that Weiss Ward and Primo line, that's a really exciting line, and they've they've uh, they've done really really well during this uh, NCHC pod. And I've been impressed. I like that combination. What do you think? You like that? I I can tell. I think based on your comments that you like that combination. Okay. I think from last year, you know, it was a lot of times it was Conley, Ward, and Weiss. Um, and I liked that line last year. And I'm fine, you know, kind of mixing up Conley because I think uh, Primo has been a really good asset on that line at center. Uh, yep. He's got a little bit more 
um, dirt and grind to his game. And he's willing to go to some of those, that dirty net front area, right? Yeah. And I think that helps relieve some stress off of Ward, that Ward can get some space and stuff. And then you throw with that, you know, we dangling the puck around uh, and the vision that he has to find guys. I mean, it's just, it's a dangerous combination. It seems to be working. And uh, I suspect that we will probably continue to see that line until, you know, things falter and, and you have to, you know, mix things up or something. But we, I would not be surprised if those three guys are together for the rest of the year. Yeah, like, I, would, I wouldn't be surprised either. The, the season year, not like, <laughs> you know, I'm not stupid. I know that we've only got like 10 days. Now, Jason has just predicted that the uh, line is going, for all of the nitpickers out there, Jason has just predicted that the line's going to be here until, you know, Two December more December 31st. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, yeah, very, yeah, hey, Jason's non-prediction prediction. Okay, our second goal of the game came a short time later. UNO was on the power play that was the five a minute power five play minute. yeah yeah that was the five minute power play that's that's as, as the the commentators like to refer to it the all you can eat power play and that one that one was a, a a newcomer that you and i have been really excited about jack randall gets the goal with assists to uh taylor ward and kevin conley good goal for him perfect 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 timing to get it uno cuts the lead to one goal it's Three to two, Western's got the lead at that point, but a but a, a great opportunity. UNO's power play, as we've talked about on this podcast, has been anemic this season. <laughs> if college hockey was like college football, you'd just be like, decline it. We're not taking the power play. It's not. <laughs> can we trade? Can we trade two power plays for a penalty shot? Uh... Oh boy. yeah, and it you know it really was anemic. This we end up like one for seven, right? Yeah. It's, yeah. I, I believe that. I we're, mean, that's I, just terrible. <laughs> like one for seven is, I, I mean, I'm glad we got one, but I mean, just one for seven, like, come on, these guys need to be, especially with our fire firepower. Like this team should be clicking at a 22 to 24% rate. I don't know if you remember, but do you remember a few seasons ago when UNO, they were a team that was able to put up goals. They were a team that was able to score, but for whatever reason, they struggled on the power play. Um, I remember those, and it might have been the kind of the the last couple of Dean Blaze seasons. It They they struggled mightily on the power play, and I never did figure out what it was. And I am surprised with the talent that we have uh, on this team that we have struggled as much as we have, but we're basically, I think we're ranked 29th or 30th in the NCAA this season out of 60 teams. So of those teams that have played, I mean, it's probably closer to like 50 some teams with all the teams that are not. Oh yeah. With all the ones that are. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I'm with you. It's, it's puzzling. Uh, We'll see if, uh, if they get it figured out at some point, but that's, I mean, that's going to hurt us down the road. Like, the problem becomes that teams start to figure that out, that they know that you're going to hurt yourself. They know that you're not a, a strong uh, power play team. And so in a situation where I may not reach for a puck or, you know, I might let up and not finish my check or something, they're going to finish their check because they know that if I get the penalty off of it, it's not that bad. Like the odds are in my favor that the team's going to, kill it off right so now you know the likes of north dakota and denver and and duluth are going to play us tighter they're going to play harder they're going to not be afraid to take seven penalties in a game because yep. if, if seven penalties in a game only cost me once and my power play clicks at 30 percent or even if it clicks as an average at 20 percent i mean if i'm clicking at one for five all i got to do is hope that you give me you know, three or four chances and odds are yep. we're even up on the power play. So, yep. so it really puts a lot of pressure on your penalty killers to be way above average to, you know, nullify your, your inabilities on the power play. You know, it wears you down over the course of time because you're getting banged up, taking hits that, you know, in, in with a team that gets, that's clicking, you you know, they're not, they're just not going to take those kinds of hits. So it, it really, it's, it's not going to show up on the score sheet as much, but it really does kind of factor into this and, and hopefully they can figure it out in most cases with teams like ours that have um, 
high skilled players like that, uh, it becomes a balance thing. It becomes a lot of times just too many guys looking to do too much and not going back to the basics of get the puck into the zone, work it around, get lateral movement, and then get the puck to the net. Yeah, and it, it becomes a situation, too, when you aren't having success on the power play. And I think you alluded to this, where you start forcing things, you start you know, making mistakes and doing other things because you're like, you just want to get that mon- monkey off your back that it, it ends up becoming even more problematic. So, so it'll be interesting to see, not to put any too much pressure on the team, but it'll be interesting to see what happens. And speaking of penalties for UNO, you know, our penalties today consisted of having too many men on the ice. <laughs> Two eager, penalties. Eager foot. Too many men on the ice. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, outside outside of the too many men, which are mental errors, you know, what wasn't that two of our three, I think? Uh, you know, according to the box score. No, those score, are only two. Yeah, according to the box score on the OMAVS website, those were our only two. And I was honestly, I was kind of surprised. But that that's a, honestly, we talk a lot about penalties, especially last season where UNO was one of the most penalty, penalized teams in the NCAA you look at this. This is this overall, other than the the too many men, they played a pretty solid game. They didn't take yeah. the stupid, silly penalties, unless you consider too many men on the ice stupid and silly. Which, <laughs> well, yeah, I mean it's stupid for sure, but it's not like it it doesn't hurt us as much, you know. And I mean, they're just miscommunications. They're things that you know will it'll tighten up over time. Like I don't worry too much about those things. You see them early on in the season, and it's hard. It's hard to remember that you know we're still pretty early on in the season, even though it's December and we've played all these games recently. Like you got to remember, yeah. this is all we've played. So there's still some some first half of the season kind of rust that guys are getting off. So hopefully they'll they'll wrap that up. But you know they played a good. You know they played strong. It wasn't like they were playing weak on the puck or anything like that. They just they were smart with their sticks. They were in positions they weren't chasing and having to reach. So the guys did did well in that um, in that regards. Well, and the score, to yeah. that later on in that period, Taylor Ward gets his second of the period. Yes, after a, at, Jason Jason <laughs> Jason just skipped over the fourth Western goal there, and I think that's fine. Let's just I skip figured over you would have wanted me to. <laughs> Well, I don't know. I was worried based on your prediction in the last podcast that that I, was number one of three. And I'm like, oh, my God. Like, were you sweating when he scored that one? <laughs> <laughs> There'll be no talking to this guy if he scores two more. <laughs> the podcast would have been done. <laughs> He's like, I'm, Oct- I'm out. <laughs> October 2018 to December 2020. Yep. <laughs> Rest in peace. Yeah. But yes, let's let's go. Yeah, Taylor Ward gets his second goal of the game, and at that point, we're thinking maybe he's going to get a hat trick. <laughs> there were he had a couple good chances after that that I thought he might get a natty and get it in the same period. I'll tell you what, yeah, and that that was uh, at that point four to three, so it's still a one goal game, but you're feeling pretty good. The faucet's been turned on. The team's starting to score. It's getting exciting. The fans are rejoicing on Twitter. It's a lot of fun at they're, that point. They're skating better. They're shooting the puck. They're doing the things that we saw them do against Duluth and the other teams uh, and the first game against Western. Um, and, I mean, shots. Like We went from only getting seven shots on goal in the first period to 16 in the second, and that was a huge... I'm sure that Gabnet must have said something in the locker room in that intermission about just shoot the flipping puck. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, absolutely. And... and... You know, that period we outscored Western Michigan 3-1. to one. It's a great period for us. We've struggled in the second period at times during this uh, NCHC pod. So that's great. 4-3 to three going into the third. We're, exciting for a, we're excited for a final 20 minutes of play. And it was a pretty good first half. Uh, well, not first. First, like five minutes of of the third period it was a little back and forth and pretty tight. It, I mean, it was shaping up that this was going to be a really good game. At that point in time, I felt like this was going to be one of those late goal kinds of things that we might 
eke out a point with a you know a goal in the last five minutes of the third period that's kind of was how i was envisioning things the way the two teams were playing in the third yeah but you look at 558 into the third period johnny tyconic was the tonic that the mavericks needed to tie the game up <laughs> you, you've been waiting to use that one haven't you? i have been you had I just, that like in your back pocket you just want me to throw those little yeah uh-huh yep the tonic to tie the game. A great goal from out near the blue line. Very, very exciting at that point. And we're it was, it was kind of a crazy time. goal, and I think it caught Western Michigan a little bit offhand because they didn't look... I don't know if it's just because it tied it up and they were thinking we just you know scrapped a three-goal lead uh, or what, but I mean they looked a little disjointed after that, and Sunberg ends up capitalizing gives Omaha their first lead of the game. Yep, less than a minute later, for sure. So that was, we were we, we were excited, we were rejoicing. You look at that point, you can tell that the momentum swung, you're excited, but it's still very much a back-and-forth game. It's a one-goal game at that point. Anything can happen down the stretch. There's too much unpredictability. And then Western takes another penalty. We've got a power play, and I'm thinking, this is perfect. Like, bury a power play goal. Go up by two, you know, halfway through the third. We're gonna we're sitting in a good position here, uh, and then we get washed out. Yeah, we had a bad turnover in the neutral zone. Um, I can't remember who that was. It might have been uh, Brandon Scanlon who turned that thing over. I can't remember, but Paul Washi for Western Michigan goes in unassisted. And at that point, I'm getting a little bit nervous. I'm getting a little bit nervous. You hate to give up the shorty. That's not something you want to see. And it's, it's tied up again at that point. Yeah, we're, you know, halfway through the third and it's even, even. Yep. Did you but get nervous? The did, line that we just, what? Did you get nervous down the stretch? I was a little bit nervous. Um, at that point, Austin Roden had started the game, but uh, he was pulled along the way and, and Isaiah Seville was in the game at that point. Uh did a great job in cleanup duty in this game for uh, for Roden and I, uh, but I was nervous. I was still nervous because they uh, there were moments where they were buzzing down around our net. I wasn't sure what was going to happen. Nervous, worried, and then Jason's showing me stuff on his phone here. So there's another game going on right now. So now I after Jason showed me that score, I'm uh, I'm. <laughs> Let's hurry this up. We need to we need to start talking like uh, Alvin and the Chipmunks here. Let's just get this thing going fast, 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 fast. Um, <laughs> so we're waiting for so something. The line that we just talked about comes through again. Yes, they to do. Give us the lead, right? Yep. Chase Primo from Jason Smallage and Taylor Ward. At that point, I'm I'm elated. At that point, I uh, I'm elated, but I'm nervous. I don't want to see another game go to overtime. I'm, I'm, I have mixed emotions about that three on three overtime that uh, the NCAA has gone with this season. So I was, I was a little bit worried down the stretch there for sure. I don't know that I was worried. It was just a, you know, a little bit flashbacks to previous years you know where we get that big goal and then it's just you know off the face off the other team scores and i'm just like well, what was the point even you know you get the lead and then you lose the lead or you tie the game and then you're back losing again and well and then so the, i was a little the, i guess i guess worried but i was a little like just keep going just don't let up just keep going and we'll be fine these last five minutes and then Western Michigan pulled their goaltender. They pulled Austin Kane. And we thought that Tyler Weiss had an empty netter. But it turned <laughs> out UNO had their second too many men on the ice penalty within the last two minutes of the game. That was a little bit too close for comfort at that point. Yeah, I don't know who you blame that one on. Um, yeah. There was... there. <laughs> I don't know about you. Debate in the household. I mean, on one hand, you blame it on Weiss because he's coming off and he plays the puck. But 
do you blame it on the guy for not getting off the ice fast enough? I think he. Ju- I think whoever was coming off the bench and onto the ice, I think jumped too quickly. Okay. I, I think they saw Tyler coming and they knew that you know Weiss is my man and I'm gonna go, and they needed to just kind of wait it out with the play there because Weiss had it like. I, he had I it. personally, I can't fault the guy because the puck's right there. You know you can steal it from him. And you know that when you do, he's last man back. Yep. And so I would have done the same thing. Like, tap that puck off his stick, put it behind him, pick it up, shoot it in the open net. You know, exactly what Weiss did. Like, that's what I would have wanted from my players. And that's, you know, as a player, that's what I would try to do. Uh, so I, I have a hard time faulting him, but... You know, ultimately, it comes down to miscommunication, like we talked about, and now we're down. But that's not a bad thing. That late in the game, when you're nursing a lead, there's no icing now. So you know, win the face off and just keep sending it 200 feet. I, you know what, I, I am impressed that Jason was able to spin, being one man down with less than a minute left. Only, <laughs> only nursing a one goal lead. You know, it's positive, John. It's a <laughs> You're more disciplined. Hey, you're not thinking about. <laughs> let's be th- serious. It's you and O. I mean, <laughs> one minute to go. I'd rather be a man down than a man up. I mean, I, and I understand what you're saying because you'd much rather be able to to clear out the puck and not have to worry about icing and have to worry about a face off in your defensive zone and the other team gets some, you know wicked pass from the face off that just happens to go to a forward who pops it in and gets the equalizer before the end of regulation. So, so yeah. And I, I, we were a little nervous there at the end, but thankfully they held it together and they came out with the six to five win. And I, I would just like to point out that after that first period, UNO outscored Western Michigan six to two. So in the, in the final two periods of the game, we outscored them six to two. So definitely a great turnaround by the Mavs. This is something we haven't seen the last, you know, several seasons as a team that really has the ability to come back from a from a significant deficit. So this is all wonderful in in the uh, the evolution of this team under Coach Gabinette, Coach Noel Bernier, and Coach Gerard. They fought through adversity. They found ways to win instead of ways to lose, and as a result, they're sitting here with one game left in the pod. And they are currently in second place in the conference. We are currently in second place. That is not some some place that we've been for 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 a long time. A long time. A long time. So we are we are making the best that we can of these unusual circumstances for hockey. And uh, and kudos to the team. Uh, that was a that was a great comeback today. I didn't know after the first period if that would happen, but great job by uh, by the Mavs. So do you want to talk about? Our players of the game. Do I get to pick first? Because <laughs> you want the easy one. Is that what you're saying? That's right. I'm going to be Captain Obvious today. So <laughs> I'm going to go with Taylor All Ward. Right, Taylor Ward, two goals, two assists. Um, that first goal that he got in particular was a really beautiful goal. I think he got it from. Uh, did he get it? Was that like right off the face off that he got that? Yeah, that was that nice set face, that face off play, and that was beautiful. I, you know, it's not on the score sheet, but I'm. I think I texted you guys that we did this little like forward press move that yes, forced the did. defenders that were there to kind of follow him closer to the net, and that's what gave Ward the space that he needed to fire that thing. So. Yep, absolutely. And you know, one of the things that I meant to bring this up that you had talked about was you had talked about in the, how in the second period they came out and started moving the puck better in transition. And this mm-hmm. is one of the things that Coach Gabinet had talked about the last couple of seasons that they were trying to get the team to be better about was, you know, moving the puck up the ice in a fastidious manner. So sometimes they get caught in some of the old habits that we've seen with this team. But you're right. They, uh, they did come out and they moved the puck a lot better in the second, third period. So now I don't get the easy one. I have to pick a hard one, right? No, I yeah. My apologies. I totally jumped on that. So I mean, it's not it's not necessarily that hard. We scored uh 6 goals. I you know, it's not hard that it's hard because there's a lot of guys that deserve a shout out. Yeah. Like, I mean, that we talked about that line. Top to bottom, that line 
deserves credit. Yep. Um, Taconic, I think, was our best defenseman, and we've talked about that's we need him to be our best defenseman. Um, and I would say I would say that he had a much better game today than uh, than the game against Duluth a couple of days ago. Yeah, that game he seemed to struggle a little bit. So this one, yeah, he would I would agree he was definitely the best defenseman on the ice today. But with that said, I'm gonna go on some. I'm gonna go with someone that I don't think is on the score sheet anywhere. Okay. And mostly just because with as bad as the team played in the first period, I thought Miller was our best forward. Okay. I mean, he just... I like his work ethic. I like his attitude. I like his play. This was a game that I wish he would have gotten on the score sheet to make it a little bit easier, but I still think that he deserves some credit for what he's doing. Um, So... My pick is going to be Miller. That's a great pick. He, um, You're right. You look at that game beginning to end. He played well throughout it, and it doesn't show up on the stat sheet, but he's a, he's a guy who's been consistently good this entire season so far in this little short two-and-a-half-week season that, we're, that yeah. we're talking about here. He really has, you know? And he's playing on line with Conley and Abate, and that, I think, helps him a lot you know, just kind of some freedom to, to try to make plays. And hopefully, you know, we see more, more production out of that. He finishes some of those, but he had a great opportunity in the first, you know, probably one of our better ones. Yep. On the season, four goals, two assists, a plus three rating. Yeah. I I think we're going to see, I think we're going to see a lot of good things from him in the second half of the season and the years to come. Yeah. So UNO gets a, we get a couple days off, and then Monday we get Cairo College. For the final which, final game of the NCHC pod. Yeah, which we're recording this, and the St. Cloud Cairo College game is on. I've, I've got the box score and the game up, and, um, and that's what I, John mentioned, me showing him something. Um, Cairo College is beating St. Cloud at this point in time. Now, granted, they're winning 3 nothing, and we just watched UNO come back from a three-goal deficit in the first. So I don't know if this is going to end up being just a replay of the afternoon game or not. But <laughs> if, I mean, if St. Cloud loses, that cements Omaha in the second, you know, in second place uh, going into the Saturday games. So... We'll see if that was a. We'll see if this was a, a fluky early part of the game, or if Coach Mike Haviland has him going. And speaking of Coach Haviland, this is the kind of you know useless trivia I come up with. I you you've seen him, you know, gray-haired guy on the bench. Mm-hmm. How old do you think Coach Haviland is? Forty-five. For, for, which, <laughs> do I even know? <laughs> okay, apparently we needed to rehearse this. Forty-five. <laughs> How old do you think I am? <laughs> Okay, I'm 48. That was okay. That that was not the set. This is Jason is just full of surprises between picking Ethan Frank to get a hat trick today. 45. Okay, well he's 53, and I thought he looked like he was about 60, but apparently I need to look in the mirror a little closer. I'm 48, so Jason thought the coach of Colorado College was younger than I am. So. You know, yeah, fans... so ask me ask me how old Gabinet is, right? <laughs> He's got to be like twelve. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Gabinet's a. Uh, how old is? I have no idea how old our our coach is in his thirties. So, we'll. Uh... Anyway, that aside, okay, that that <laughs> setup did not work. Jason did not <laughs> did not get the assist on that one. I didn't take one. the bet. Uh... I didn't take the bait this time, huh? <laughs> so it's still two to zero oh at this point in the game that's going on while we're recording this podcast. Three nothing. Really? Okay. It's three nothing now. Yeah. What point are we at, at at the game, Jason? Uh, there's like five minutes left in the first. Okay. My Gabinette's thirty nine years old, so I I don't know if I should feel bad about that. Or... And Jason had my cavalry be <laughs> six years <laughs> older than him. God, I need to go on a diet and take some vitamins and oh boy. <laughs> 
<laughs> Hopefully this keeps people entertained, right? I, well, you know, we try to have some levity on here. Well, I'll tell you what, this this is let's 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 talk about Colorado College in their last two games. They beat Minnesota Duluth four to one. They beat Miami four to one. So I don't know. I mean, yeah, they they lost six to one to us and they lost five to two to Western early in this thing, but you know, the very first game of the, the NCHC pod, because they were delayed getting here, they they tied 3-3 three to three against Western and got a shootout win. So they're, right now, they're 2-2-1. Two, two and one. And as Jason pointed out, they have a, a three-goal lead over St. Cloud. Who knows where, who knows where this uh, post-COVID Colorado College uh, team is, uh, is headed. They're this may well, and they've got they've got back to back, so they they're playing now, and then they play Miami in the evening game on Saturday. Yep. Before they get their day break, before they play us on Monday, so they, I mean, they could be in theory six points up, so they'd be on Omaha's heels. This would be yeah. could be a game for second place or something like that between these two teams and i think a lot of people at the beginning of the season would have picked you know these two teams to be in the bottom half and they they certainly the did we so. were picked we were picked sixth i think colorado college was picked behind us um but and then that, miami at eight right yeah colorado yeah. college that program has far too much tradition to be in the basement of this conference forever so it'll be interesting to see how this game uh, against saint cloud that's going on as we're talking uh, holds up but do you have a prediction do you have a prediction for Monday's game, our last game of the pod? Well, I don't know. I'm struggling with it because my gut says that it's, I mean, we played them and it really wasn't, I don't know, it's kind of wasn't much of a game. It wasn't. But it wasn't at all was, close. No, I was early on when they first got here. Yep. I think they've shown that they're a better team than when we saw them first. At the same point, this was the wake up game for Omaha. I think to say, just because you beat them handedly the first time doesn't mean that you're going to do it again, unless you're going to go out and do it again. Right. So, I you know I hope the guys have a, a better mental state coming into the Colorado College game than they did coming into Michigan. I am I think it's going to be a closer game. I'm going to say 4-2. to two. Okay. Omaha wins. Yeah, and, and my only question is, you know, obviously these games in this pod have been played in rapid fire, but when we had had, when we have had a bit of a break, when we had the break between our two to nothing win over St. Cloud on December 13th, uh, we didn't play for another three days until we played Minnesota Duluth, which was our previous game before the uh, Western game that we've been talking about on this podcast. And I will tell you that game against Duluth, we looked we looked a bit we looked a bit sluggish at times. We looked a bit tired at times. So. I don't know how this this little bit of a break here we're going to get the next couple of days is going to affect the team. Will it will it benefit them being able to rest up, or will uh, they be a little bit rusty after that break? We yeah, it's just hard to tell at this point, and it's hard to tell in this pod. There's been uh, certainly the games haven't always gone predictably. So Jason's prediction of four to two I think was a was a good one. I'm going to go a little bit closer than that. I'm going to go four to three. Um, and I'm going to say that we win, but who knows? Like this game against Western today, you don't know how they'll come out and play. Obviously, we beat them handily early on in the pod, 6-1. to one, So it'll be interesting to see. But I'm going to say 4-3. to three. It'll be exciting. It's a, it's a, it's a, we don't play. We, we seem to struggle in games that we play before 7 o'clock at night. So, um, and this one's at noon. So noon, uh, noon Omaha time. So. Do you think there's any chance that we see Roden in net? You know, I, unfortunately, I think that was a that was an unfortunate circumstance for him tonight, um, and that that happens with goaltenders. I 
I was honestly, I was kind of surprised that they started him because we just saw him um, a couple games before have a have a solid game against St. Cloud State, and I thought they might wait, um, but they decided to do it this time. Um, and that's always easy. I mean, if things had gone well, we would have been like, oh, it was a brilliant move to mix it up again and continue that rotation. I don't know. Do you think we'll see uh, Austin Roden? I'm going to say no. I'm going to say that we see Isaiah Seville in that. Yeah, I don't I don't think that, you know, barring an injury or something like that, you know, I, I don't see a reason not to start Seville in that game. I think... It, again, this is kind of like, for me, if you're going to give him... If you're going to do it, I would have done Seville tonight and then Roden on Monday. But the yeah. fact that you started Roden today, I just don't see you going back to him and trying to give him a, a chance to, you know, reclaim him. I, mean, I don't think he's really that bad. It's not like he let in six, and honestly, the four that he let in... Right. Two of them, I said, yeah, you kind of needed to stop, and the other two were like, you were... He wasn't going to stop him. didn't help you no, out at all. On they that. didn't. No, the team playing in front of him certainly didn't help him. So, so uh, you know, I I would uh, I would not want him to get down. I don't want him to get discouraged. I do right. think it's possible we'll see him because in order in it, to start the second half of the season, we're going to play back to back series against North Dakota, and I do mm-hmm. think it's possible we might see him in one of those games. And I don't know which one. We'll 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 talk about that, you know, when we get closer. But. But yeah, so I, uh, you know, that was a, that was a tough circumstance for him, but, uh, but that's all part of the process as well. So I guess we will see on Monday when yes. we're, well, probably Tuesday when the podcast comes out, but yes. we'll see on and Monday in the game and Jason's going to hear gonna, about it if you can't watch on Tuesday. Jason's going to be sad that the rapid fire podcasts are over. Jason's just happy that I, you know, that we're recording these remotely probably because, you know, otherwise I would have been at your house like every, I would basically would have had to just like live at your house the last two and a half weeks. <laughs> two weeks. Just stay You'd have in. to quarantine over here. and <laughs> I'd have to quarantine at the house. Yeah, exactly. Um, but it's been, honestly, it's been kind of fun to do these, these podcasts back to back to back. It's a, you, you remember the games really, really well. Well, I don't know how well, but we remember them a lot better than we, uh, than we do and it's kind of been fun to do them in, in fast fashion so 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 if you like this format if this is something that you know you prefer usually our, our mo has been to to do them after the weekend at the end of the weekend so we you know take the friday saturday game and then record on a sunday and you'd hear about both games you know if, if you like this format you prefer you know two podcasts then let us know and i think you know we'll see what the comments say and you know, maybe this is a new thing for us to do going forward. I don't know how that'll work come the second <laughs> half with some of the schedule they got. But, I mean, if this is something you like, let us know. Because we do read the comments, and, and we really, really appreciate everyone that tunes in and listens to us. Uh, usually on a, you know, basically a weekly basis, and now on, like, a nightly basis. So, yeah, thank you. Thank yep. you, let thank us, you. Let us know on Facebook, Twitter. Um, let us know in the comments section on YouTube, SoundCloud, wherever else. Yeah, we'd love to hear from you guys. And uh, as always, we uh, we love it when you guys uh, give us ratings. We love it when you guys listen to the podcast. Uh, we really appreciate it because it helps keep us going. One more of these uh, quick fire podcasts, and uh, we'll look forward to uh, watching the game with all of you on uh, Monday afternoon against Colorado College. Should be a good one from Baxter Arena. Until next time. Go Mavs. Go Mavs.